Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in the previous video, we learned about the different types of shift registers. So in this video, let us see few applications of the shift register. And through the applications, we will understand that how the shift register can be used for the different applications. So of course, since the shift register is made up of the different flip flops, so it can be used for storing the data. But apart from that, it can also be used for the different applications. So the first application is for generating the timing delay. So in the earlier videos, we have already seen the serial in serial out type of shift register. So in this register, if we apply some input, then it appears at the output after the four clock pulses. That means this circuit provides the delay of the four clock cycles. And the same thing is also shown in the timing diagram. So here, this SI is the serial input, while this SO is the serial output. So as you can see, the input is appearing at the serial output after the four clock delays. So in general, we can say that if we have a n-bit shift register, then we can provide the delay of the n clock cycles. So in this way, using the shift register, we can provide the delay of the fixed interval. Or in a way, it can be used as the delay line. So that is one of the applications of the shift register. The second application is the serial to parallel and to parallel to serial conversion. Now in the computers, for the faster processing, the data is processed parallelly. But whenever this data needs to be sent to the outside device, then it needs to be converted into the serial form. For example, let's say internally in the CPU, the 64 bits of data is processed parallelly. But suppose, if we send the same data outside parallelly, then we require 64 such data lines. And for the long distance communication, it is not feasible as well as the cost effective. So for that, we need the parallel to serial conversion at the transmitter side. So using the parallel in serial out type of shift register, the parallel data can be converted into the serial form. Similarly at the receiver end, once the serial data is received, then for the parallel processing, it needs to be converted into the parallel form. So with the help of the serial in parallel out type of shift register, we can convert the serial data into the parallel form. So in this way, this serial in parallel out and this parallel in serial out type of shift registers are essential for serial to parallel as well as the parallel to serial conversion. Now typically, all the devices have the dedicated internal hardware for this parallel to serial as well as the serial to parallel conversion. And this UART is the most commonly used hardware protocol for the same thing. So internally, this UART uses the shift registers for the serial to parallel as well as for the parallel to serial conversion. So that is the second applications of the shift register. So now let us see the next application. So if you want to detect the specific sequence or the specific pattern in the received serial data, then with the help of the shift register, we can do that. For example, the circuit diagram shown below can detect the 4-bit sequence in the received serial data. So whatever sequence which we want to detect is loaded in the lower register. Let's say we want to detect the sequence 1011. So that should be loaded in the lower register. And the serial data is passed through the upper register. So here, this upper register is the serial in serial out type of shift register. So here, the output of the both registers is compared using the XNOR gates. So this XNOR gates compares the each bit of the shift register. So as you know, the output of the XNOR gate is equal to 1 when the both bits are same. So here, the output of the XNOR gates are given to the AND gate. That means whenever the required pattern is found in the received data, then the output of the each XNOR gate will become 1. And therefore, the output of this AND gate will also become 1. So in this way, we can detect the specific pattern in the received data. So that is the third application of the shift register. Now using the shift register, we can also design some counters like the ring counter and the Johnson counter. So first of all, let me briefly explain about the counter. So the counter is the digital circuit which counts the number of times the particular event has been occurred. 
so similar to the register the counter is also designed using the flip flops so the output of each flip flop in the counter represents the specific state of the counter so as the clock signal is applied to the counter then at the rising or the falling gauge of the clock the state of the counter will change in the specific sequence and the number of different states or the number of different sequences which can be represented by this counter is known as the modulus or the mode of the counter for example if the counter is the mode 10 counter then during the counting it will go through the 10 different states in the specific sequence and once again that sequence will get repeated so the ring counter and the johnson counter are two such counters which can be designed using the shift registers so in the ring counter the output of the shift register is connected back to the input and initially using the preset and the clear inputs of the flip flop the initial value of the register is loaded so in the ring counter the initial value is loaded in a such a way that the output of only one flip flop is high and the remaining flip flop remains low so in this case as you can see the preset input is connected to this d0 flip flop while the clear input is connected to this d3 d2 as well as the d1 flip flop so with the help of the clear input these three flip flops can be reset to 0 while with the help of the preset input this d0 flip flop can be set to 1 that means the initial content of the register is equal to 0 0 now here since the output of the register is connected back to the input so with every clock pulse this one will rotate through the shift register and due to that we will get the four different output sequences so as you can see the specific sequence will repeat after the four clock pulses so we can say that this counter is the mode four counter so in this ring counter the modulus or the mode of the counter is same as the number of flip flops in the shift register so if we have a n bit counter then we can say that it is the mod n counter where the n is the number of flip flops in the shift register so this is the timing diagram of the 4 bit ring counter so as you can see the each output will become one only after the four clock cycles that means here the frequency of the each output is one by four times the frequency of the clock signal that means this ring counter can also be used as the frequency divider moreover if you see this output q3 q2 q1 and q0 then all are phase shifted with respect to each other so if we want to generate the different phase shifted digital signals then with the help of the ring counter we can do that so that is all regarding the ring counter so similarly using the shift register we can also design the johnson counter so the design of the johnson counter is similar to the ring counter but here instead of the q output of the last flip flop the q bar output is connected to the input so that is why it is also known as the twisted ring counter so here initially with the help of the clear input all the flip flops can be reset to 0 that means the initial content of the register is equal to 0 0 0 now here since the q0 bar is connected back to the input so at the next clock edge the input to the d3 will be equal to 1 so after the first clock pulse this q3 output will become 1 and the remaining 3 bits will get right shifted that means after the first clock pulse the output of the counter will be equal to 1 0 0 now once again since the q0 is equal to 0 so the input to the d3 will be equal to 1 that means after the second clock pulse also this q3 will remain 1 and as you can see the remaining 3 bits will get right shifted that means after the second clock pulse the output of the counter will be equal to 1100 -1 so in this way the output of the counter will change at the every clock pulse and after the eight clock cycles the output sequence will get repeated so we can say that this 4 bit johnson counter has the eight different states or we can say that it is the mod 8 counter so in general we can say that if we have a n bit johnson counter then it will have total 2n states or in other words the modulus of the n bit johnson counter is equal to 2n now in this counter by connecting the additional logic circuit at the output we can decode the state of the counter and we can know that 
when the counter has completed the specific count. For example, in this case, if you want to know that when the 8 count has been completed, then for that, we can consider the any specific state of the counter and corresponding to that state, we can connect the output of the each flip flop to the end gate. For example, if we take this first state that is 0000, 0, 0, 0, then we can connect the Q3 bar, Q2 bar, Q1 bar and the Q0 bar to the end gate. So in this way, the output of the end gate will become 1 whenever all the outputs is equal to 0. And as you can see, the same thing will get repeated only after the 8 clock pulses. So in this way, we can take any state and correspondingly, we can find the combination for the end gate. But actually, if you closely observe, then there is no need to take all four outputs. For example, in the 0000 state, we can connect this Q3 bar and the Q0 bar to the end gate. Because if you see, then this Q3 and the Q0 are 0 only for this specific state. That means just by connecting the two outputs to the end gate, we can know that when the 8 count gets completed. And probably, we can also connect the LED at the output of the end gate. That means whenever the counter completes the 8 count, then the LED will glow. And in this way, we can know that the counter has completed the 8 counts. Likewise, if we consider the any 8 state of the counter, then we can find the corresponding logic circuit for the same. For example, if we take this 1000 state, then we can connect this Q3 and the Q2 bar to the end gate. Because for this state only, this Q3 is 1 and the Q2 is equal to 0. So in this way, by connecting the external circuit, we can decode the count of the counter and we can get the indication of the specific count. So in case of the ring counter, there is no need for the additional circuit. Because here, the output goes high only after the end clock cycles. So just by checking the output, we can know that when the specific count gets completed. So that is the ring counter and the Johnson counter. And as we have seen, using the shift register, it is possible to design these two counters. So now, let us move to the next application. So the shift register can also be used for the sequence generation. So typically using the counters, it is possible to generate the specific sequence. But using the shift register in a specific manner, we can also generate the repetitive sequence. So we have already seen the diagram of the ring counter, where the output of the register is connected back to the input. But the initial content of the register was loaded in a such a way that only one bit is high and the remaining bits are low. But instead of that, if we just load the sequence, which we want to repeat over and over again, then we can design the sequence generator. For example, if we load the 1011 initially, then we will get the continuous sequence of 1011. So here, the same thing is shown clock by clock. So as I said, the initial content of the register is equal to 1011. Now since the output of the register is connected back to the input, so the content of the Q0 or the content of the rightmost flip flop will get shifted to the Q3 at the next clock pulse. And similarly, the remaining 3 bits will get right shifted. So at the next clock age, the content of the register is equal to 1101. And similarly, the content of the register will change over the next 3 clock pulses. And after that, once again we will get the same sequence that is 1011. So here, since the output is taken from the Q0, so if we observe the Q0 output, then we are getting this 1011 sequence. And if you want to generate the larger sequence, let's say a 8 or the 16 bit sequence, then we can use the 8 bit or 16 bit shift register. So this is the diagram of the 8 bit sequence generator using the shift register. So in this way, we can also use the shift register for the sequence generation. So now let us move to the next application. So using the shift registers with the few XOR gates, it is possible to generate this PRBS sequence. So the pseudo random binary sequence is the periodic sequence of ones and zeros which is mathematically randomized. And it is used in the communication for the link verification but apart from that it is also used in the encryption as well as in the simulations. So to generate this sequence the output of the shift register is tapped from the few locations and it is XORed with the help of the XOR gate. And then this output of the XOR gate is connected back to the input. 
So here, using the 4-bit shift register, one such PRBS is generated. So here, the Q0 and the Q1 outputs of the shift registers are tapped and it is given to the XOR gate. And as you can see, the output of the XOR gate is fed back to the input. So now let us see how this circuit generates the random binary sequence. So let's say initially, all the bits of the registers are set to 1. So here, this Q3 is equal to Q1 XO, Q0. So initially, since both Q1 and Q0 is equal to 1, so this input to the Q3 will remain 0. So at the first clock age, the Q3 will become 1, while the remaining 3 bits will get right shifted. So once again, if you see, then both Q1 and Q0 is equal to 1. That means once again, the input for the Q3 is equal to 0. That means at the next clock age, once again this Q3 will remain 0 and the remaining 3 bits will get right shifted. So in this way, the output of the shift register will change at the every clock pulse. And as you can see, once again it will become 1111 after the 15th clock pulse. So here, since we are taking the output from the Q0, so this will be the binary sequence that we will get at the output. And as you can see, it will get repeated after the 15 clock cycles. That means the length of the sequence is equal to 15. So if we have a 4-bit shift register, then the maximum length of the PRBS that we can generate is equal to 15. And such sequences are known as the maximum length sequence. So in general, if we have an n-bit shift register, then the maximum length of the sequence which we can generate is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1. So whether the generated sequence is of maximum length or not, that depends on the number of taps as well as the location of the taps in the shift register. For example, in the same 4-bit shift register, if we tap from the Q0 and the Q2, then we will not get the maximum length sequence. So in this case, the initial content of the register is equal to 0011. And as you can see, it gets repeated after the 6 clock cycles. That means in this case, the length of the sequence is equal to 6. That means whether we will get the maximum length sequence or not, that depends on the number of taps as well as the position of the taps. Apart from that, it also depends on the initial content of the shift register. For example, if the initial content of the register is equal to 0000, then the output will always remain 0. So in this way, using the shift register, we can generate this pseudo-random binary sequence. And as the number of bits in the shift register increases, then the length of the sequence will also increase. For example, using the 16 bit of shift register, we can generate the PRBS with a maximum length of 2 to the power 16 minus 1, and that is equal to 65,535. On the other end, if we take the 32 or the 64 bit shift register, then the maximum length of the sequence will be very high. So that is the another application of the shift register. Apart from that, this shift register can also be used for performing the arithmetic operations. For example, for performing the serial addition as well as the multiplication and the division, these shift registers are used. Well, how these arithmetic operations are exactly carried out, I will cover it in the separate video. But just using the simple shift right or the shift left operation, it is possible to divide or multiply the binary number in the power of 2. For example, this 101 in the decimal corresponds to 5. Now if I just shift this number to the left by a 1 bit position and add the 0 at the LSP position, then that number will become 1010 and in the decimal that corresponds to 10. That means just by simply performing the left shift operation, it is possible to multiply the number by 2. So let us see the same thing in the shift register. So here let's say we have a 6 bit shift register. And initially, the content which is loaded in the register is equal to 00101. So in the decimal, that corresponds to 5. Now here as you can see, the serial input is connected to the ground. That means whenever the shift left operation is performed, then the 0 will be shifted inside the shift register. Now if we just perform the shift left operation, then all the bits will get shifted to the left side by a 1 bit position. So the earlier bit at the MSB position will go away from the shift register and as you can see, the 0 will be placed at the LSB position. So now, 
the content of the register is equal to 1 0 1 0 and in the decimal that corresponds to 10. Similarly, if I perform the one more shift left operation, then this 101 will get shifted to the left side by one bit position. And now the new number in the register is equal to 10100. So in the decimal that corresponds to 20. And once again, if I perform the one more shift left operation, then the content of the register is equal to 101000. So in the decimal that corresponds to 40. So as you can see, the every shift left operation multiplies the number by the factor of 2. So here, since we have performed the three shift left operations, so the initial number will get multiplied with the 2 to the power 3. Or in other words, the initial number will get multiplied by the factor of 8. So in this way, by performing the shift left operation, we can multiply any number in the power of 2. Likewise, by performing the right shift operation, we can divide the number by 2. But in this case, if there is any reminder, then that will get discarded. So let us see the same thing in the shift register. So once again, here we are taking the 6-bit shift register. And let's say the initial content of the register is equal to 110100. So in the decimal, that corresponds to 52. So here, the serial input is connected to the ground terminal. That means whenever the right shift operation is performed, then the zero will be placed at the MSB position and the remaining bits will get right shifted. So now, if I perform the one right shift operation, then the content of the register will become 11010. So in the decimal, that corresponds to 26. So as you can see, with the right shift operation, the initial content got divided by the two. Now once again, if I perform the right shift operation, then the content of the register will become 1101. So in the decimal, that corresponds to 13. And further, if I perform one more right shift operation, then the content of the register will become 110. So in the decimal, that corresponds to 6. So if I just divide this 13 by the factor of 2, then the quotient will be equal to 6, while the remainder will be equal to 1. So after the shift operation, we will get only this quotient. And if there is any reminder, then that will get discarded. That means with this shift right operation, of course we can divide the number by 2. But if there is any reminder after the division, then that will get discarded. So in this way, by performing the shift right operation n times, we can divide the number by 2 to the power n. So in this way, we can also perform the arithmetic operations with the help of the shift registers. So these are the few applications of the shift registers. So if you have any question or suggestion, then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.